ask me, why am I an atheist? Do I hate God? Am I angry with God? You know, I don't even believe God exists. So I can't hate God. I can't be angry at God. I am angry with religion. If I could eradicate religion with a snap of a finger, I would do it. And the reason is quite simple. As Christopher Hitchens says, religion poisons everything. So people often ask me, so if I eradicate religion, what do I replace it with? That's a good question. It had me thinking for a while. And then I heard a quote from somebody. I don't know who it was and I apologize to that person. They said, if you eradicate cancer, what do you replace it with? That's brilliant. Religion is a cancer on society. Eradicate it, problem solved, we don't have to replace it with anything. So this video is about how religion is a cancer on society. And I've decided to break it up into a couple of segments. And we'll take a look at each segment individually. And we can see how when put together, these segments show what a cancer on society religion actually is. According to Christians, faith is the ultimate. It's what should be strived for. It is what you should be aiming for to be a good Christian. Ephesians 2 verse 8 tells us it's a gift from God. And Hebrews 11 6 says it's impossible to please God without faith. Hebrews 11 verse 1 tells us that, that uh, faith is the assurance. And that tells us it is whatever you hope for will, will be. And it's an assurance that things you cannot see are true. But that's not really the case. What faith actually is, is a belief without sufficient evidence, without anything to back up the claim. So if you have faith, you just believe blindly without any, any evidence whatsoever. Now, I don't particularly care what is believed in church and what they do there. What I do care about is when it spills over into society. So faith to a certain extent is gullibility. Because you don't need evidence for what you believe or for what's told to you, you then are in the real world fall prey to con men, scam artists, pyramid schemes, basically anybody that says to you, give me your money, trust me, I'll take care of it. That doesn't make sense in the real world and it shouldn't make sense in religion either. Now faith is not only a problem where it comes to looking after your money or people scamming you out of your money. It leads to a bigger problem. And that is with which we're coming into the next segment, the dishonesty displayed by religious people to cover up the problems with faith. I know many Christians who are inherently good people. They're honest, they're moral, they live good lives. But when it comes to the religion, they are forced to be immoral, to lie, to deceive, to obfuscate. A good example of this is the slavery, which you find in Exodus 21 and other, and other chapters, where God gives instructions on how to acquire your slaves, how to mistreat them, and many other rules about slavery. Slavery is immoral, and the vast majority of people have come to realize this. Even people, even the religious people, inherently know it's immoral. But they have a problem, and whenever you discuss slavery with them and the, and, and the context of the Bible, you see the, the face glaze over as the gears start turning in their heads when cognitive dissonance sets in. They realize, they know it is immoral, but they can't say anything against it, because that goes against their holy book, and they can't go against their holy book because of the faith problem. So they will lie, deceive, obfuscate, do anything they can. They will change the subject. They will answer a question with a question. They'll do anything but be honest about the immorality faced with the holy book. The religious people will blatantly lie to uphold their beliefs. Now, back in ancient times when we didn't have the knowledge we have today about nature and science and how the world works, we made up stories that explain how things came to be. Ancient Greeks used to say that Zeus would throw lightning bolts at those who displeased him, which explained lightning in the sky. Uh, Poseidon used his trident to create storms to sink ships which, uh, which which offended him in some way. 
And Bronze Age uh, go goat herders had an explanation for rain, where they said that there was a windows that there were windows in the firmament that God used to open to allow water from space to fall down to earth. This is found in Genesis seven verse eleven. These were fine for the times because we needed explanations and there weren't any others. The, this is the problem called God of the gaps, where where there's a gap in knowledge, we plug in a God did it. This is dangerous. The minute you put a God in, thinking stops, investigation stops. There's no need to investigate further because you have an answer. God did it. But if we do investigate further and we find out God didn't do it, there's never been an instance where, where we have investigated and found, oh, it was actually God that did it. Not once. It's always been explainable by science, nature, or some other known element of life. One of the good examples of how the church has stifled knowledge was when Galileo was arrested in 1616 for heresy because he had the audacity to, to proclaim that the earth moved around the sun instead of the sun moving around the earth as the Bible said. This is only one example. There have been many. Now, where would we have been today if the church hadn't stifled inform information over the, over the decades, the millennia? Where would we be today? Uh, if people were, had been allowed to investigate further, to acknowledge that the Bible wasn't all there is, and there was information over and above what the Bible says, how far would we be today? The good news is that since the ancient times when knowledge was scarce, and God did everything, we've slowly but surely been making scientific advancements where we've come to understand how certain things happen and why they happen. And each step as we've taken it, and we found out God didn't do it, God's influence over the world has become smaller and smaller. God has, God has been pushed into ever decreasing pockets of areas where we don't know. The danger here is not to say if for those small things, those small amounts of things we don't know, God done it. We should leave it open. Say, I don't know. Say, let's have a look. Let's investigate. Let's find out. That's the way to get to the real answers. Not by saying God done it. So religion has done us a, a great disservice over the millennia for not allowing knowledge to proliferate. It has stifled knowledge over the years and has harmed us tremendously. Now, because the religion has instituted this required faith, the result in dishonesty and the obstruction of knowledge over the years, it has set up a brilliant system by which it controls the lives of everybody. Uh, it's set up a system of reward and punishment where it's a, the, the perfect carrot and the stick. So you've got the perfect reward, which is an ever, everlasting bliss in heaven with God. And the, the, the punishment is this burning in the flames of hell for all eternity. Now that the church is everybody's undivided attention because of this heaven and hell system, they're in a position where they can dictate anything and it will be carried out. And they do. They have absurd, idiotic, immoral instructions, which people have to follow without, without any thought. It is purely dictated to them. And the church's ingenuity doesn't just end there. They put contradictory messages into the Bible, such like in John 1 verse 18. Uh, it says, no man hath seen God at any time. And Genesis 32 verse 30 says, I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. So which one is it? Has, has God never been seen? Or have some people seen God? And this isn't the only one that says he's seen God. There's at least 50, at least 50 different times in the Bible uh, accounts of people saying that they have seen God. This sets up a system where God can't lose. You, you can argue that nobody's ever seen God, and you could argue that some people have seen God. It's a win-win situation for God. And because of the way it's been set, set up by faith, dishonesty, and the dictate of the church, you cannot argue the opposite. You must argue in favor either way. So to avoid punishment, Christians will follow whatever's dictated to them, irrespective of how immoral or how illogical it is.
when it comes to religious conflicts, the problem is not only that the religion is a problem to society, they are problems to each other. Religions believe that their God is the one and true God of the universe and all the others are false. And they believe not only is their God worth fighting for, they actually insist on it. So these religious ideas have resulted in religions assimilating others, either by conversion or conquest. And this almost always leads to war. And there have been many. Here are just a, just a few of them as example. You know, for institutions who profess to love peace, they sure love to fight a lot. Although there are several reasons why the religious would commit atrocities in the name of their religion, it certainly doesn't help when the God of the Bible leads by example. There are many examples of atrocities perpetrated by God, but I'm going to give you just a couple of them. In Exodus 23 verse 23, he slaughtered all the innocent Egyptian children. Numbers 11 verse 33, he kills everybody with a plague. Numbers 12 verses 1 to 10, he inflicts Miriam with leprosy. 1 Samuel 5 verse 6, he inflicts Philistines with tumors. 2 Samuel 12, he kills, Dave, he kill, kills David's child. 2 Samuel 24, he sends a pestilence that kills 70,000 men. These are only a few of the examples of the atrocities God perpetrates. There are many others. Now, if the God does that, how could he possibly tell us not to do it? And because he does it himself, he doesn't tell us not to do it. People are going to do it in his name. So committing atrocities is a form of coercion. It is a do things our way or we'll torture you until you do. There have been many examples of actual atrocities in, in the modern age. And these include the murders of innocent people accused of witchcraft, the persecution of homosexuals with either imprisonment or execution, the Inquisition, the ethnic cleansing of Kashmir, Mayan sacrifices, Incan sacrifices, the Hindu thuggy murders, the beheading of journalists. Without religion, inspired by prophets and through dictates through their holy books, these and other atrocities could and will in future be avoided. So Bronze Age superstition, which was dictated as authority, has caused arguably the worst of atrocities that you can get. And that is med medical negligence, which has led to the deaths of thousands of innocent people, including and mainly children, because of the idiotic beliefs held by their parents. So the Jehovah's Witness belief, which is normally the one that first comes to mind when you're talking about religious negligence, stems from a verse in Leviticus 17 verse 11 where it says for the life of a creature is in the blood and I've given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar and some nonsense in Acts 15 verse 29 that's wholly irrelevant except it has the word blood in it so because of this stupid scripture they don't allow blood transfusions and they don't accept any blood components to be administered to the body at all and as a result, thousands of people have lost their lives. Once again, innocent children following these insane ideas. Now, Christian scientists are another set of batshit crazy fanatics who believe that diseases are mental errors and they should be prayed right. They do not allow medical interventions at all. Uh, if you get sick, you have to consult with headquarters who will assign people to pray, f to pray for you. It never works, and people die in their thousands. Religion does real physical harm to people. I've saved the worst for last. Catholic priests have been raping children for centuries, and this criminal organization has been using congregants' money to shuffle these pedophiles from parish to parish, from church to church, for years to avoid criminal prosecution. Sadly, Catholic priests are not the only ones abusing children. 
There have been reports across the religious spectrum. These are just some of them. The Anglican Church in Australia between 1990 and 2008 had 191 allegations of child sex abuse. The Church of England in 2015 had 2,195 cases. The Australian branch of the Jehovah's Witnesses reported 1,800 victims since 1950. And the Methodist Church of Australia also reported uh, since 1950 1,885 cases. So whether we are talking about faith, religious dishonesty, control through dictate, obstruction of knowledge, religious conflicts, atrocities in the name of religion, religious medical negligence, child abuse, or more, or more specifically, a combination of all of them. Religion is a cancer on society. Thank you once again for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the little bell notification icon. And if you click on, it, on, on my name, Truth Seek, at the bottom, you'll be able to see all the other videos in this range. Once again, thank you. I look forward to next time.